Hey guys, I just wanted to shoot a quick video. I'm going to work on a repair today. Um, I'm not sure if this can actually be seen in the video or not. It probably would be very difficult to show. Um, what I'm looking at right now is the set on these shears. It doesn't look like I'm going to get a good shot to show where my problem is. Come on now. Anyway, what's happening with the shear is, is it was um, caught in a wheel and on the top part of the shear right here on this particular blade it was actually bent. It was hit by the wheel and it was twisted up this way so the, the blade is basically instead of having a gentle curve of set from one from, from the, uh, the, the back of the ride area back around over the top of the screw and then back down towards the tip like it should it's actually bent from about this point upward some. So Anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and show uh, how, at least I'm going to try this anyway in the video, see if I can hammer this back in, because where it's bent way back here, it would be very difficult to get into any kind of a bending block, or use a, I can't use a scissor press because it's hollow um, ground, and sometimes I'd use a press to actually press set back in, and I would ding either side of the hollow if I did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and actually hammer it in, which is something that I don't typically do with a heel dolly. This heel dolly is something you can buy from an automotive supply store. Um, uh, it's what they use to bang dents out of cars, and that can actually help. Um, right here on the back side of this piece, I've got a slight bend upwards. So let's go ahead and do a test cut on this, and you can see um, it will not cut the paper towel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart. And I'm going to try and rebend that top blade by hammering it in. And again, we'll take a look at this here and see if I can show it this way here. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see that real well in the video. But do you see how the blade kind of comes up and then curves outward instead of curving up this way towards the tip? Let's see if we can fix that. So we'll start right back here. Now the key with hammering set into a scissor is making sure that as you come over your curved block that you're striking in the sweet spot. You can hear here I'm hitting the sweet spot, but if I turn up, you hear the difference in how it strikes. So you want to hit that sweet spot. You want to start behind where the problem is and work your way across. That is not working at all. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to get that to bend in any way, shape, or form. It might have taken a little bit out, but it certainly is not working like I thought that it would. Um, but at least this gives you a view of what uh, hammering can be like as far as resetting shear. Um, what I'll probably do is uh, do a little bit of work with one of our presses and see if I can't get the thing pressed back in because it's really, at this point, it's my only choice. So we'll give that a shot. All right, next in line, I'm going to give this a shot with the Wolf One Ton Scissor Press System. Uh, this is a Dayton press, and this is the piece that Wolf actually makes that goes on the Dayton One Ton press um, and the pin that you can put into the ram bar. Uh, what's interesting about this is it's got a slight curve to it and it allows you to actually put pressure down on the shear to do a bend in the shear. Now, on this particular shear, again, because it's hollow ground, this is not something that I typically would do because as I press, there's a good chance that I'm going to ding the inside surface of the shear somewhat. Um, I'm going to have to be real careful with that, so I'm going to go real light and see if I can move it. Um, I don't know how this is going to work out, but let's give it a shot anyway and see what happens. The scary part is, is I'm having to start literally right over the hole that's in the shear, uh, so hopefully it does not snap. Normally this should be um, actually bolted down on a countertop, so you can see that it wants to bend just a little bit and move. So we're starting where that back area is. Let's see if we moved it some. And no, we have not. 
So in order to get this to work right, I need to have a little bit more pressure. In order to be able to do that, I'm going to have to um, secure this to the table. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new piece and go ahead and start with that. Okay, what I did was I, um, I clamped the press uh, onto the table with a C-clamp. So that'll give me the stability that I need in order to be able to do the work that I need to do. Zoom in just a little bit here. So you can see some of the work that I'm doing. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to move some now. All right, <clears throat> let's see if we can get this thing to move. By the way, throughout this, I have been wearing safety glasses because you never know if a blade is going to snap or not. You have to be careful. Always protect your eyes. Always protect yourself. You do not want to get hurt. All right, let's give this another shot. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on here now. You can probably, in the video, see the blade flexing slightly. And we are beginning to take a little bit of that bow out now. All right, there's still a little bit um, of a bend right in this area of the blade. Um, when I lift this thing away, by the way, what I'm doing is I'm just checking the overall bow just visually. I'm going to start back behind where that area is again. Try and put a little bit more of a gentle curve right into that area and we'll see if that fixed it or not. Um, the blade is definitely bowing back the direction that it should, so at least we're at a good stopping point right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm starting to run out of battery on this camera, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this off for just a second and um, then I'll go ahead and uh, put this together. We'll do a quick test cut. Okay, the blade is now back together, um, or the shear rather. What I'm going to do is we'll do a test cut uh, right here. Let's see if we can get a decent view of this. Um, I've already opened and closed it even before I started this back up, and I, it, do, it does make positive contact now. It feels a little bit rough, so it's going to have to be reworked. Um, but you can see that now it's cutting clean all the way through to the tip. Um, there's a little bit of a catch at the tip, so we'll have to deal with that, but that can be dealt with uh, either by taking the tips back, depending upon what's going on with the tip, or by uh, bending um, on the bending block to do a little bit of set work. It just depends on where the issue is, if it's duck billed out on the top. It looks like it is just a little bit like there's a burr because I can see a little bit of the uh, material from the, the paper at the tip of the scissor. Um, anyway, this is a rather extensive little uh, view of how you can dam fix a severely damaged and bent shear. Uh, Either I tried hammering, that didn't work. I knew that putting it on like the wolf set adjusting tool just was not going to be enough to be able to do this. In this particular case, it was the one ton press uh, with the um, scissor bending attachment that wolf makes that saved the day. Uh, but uh, still, the shear would have to be sharpened and then um, handed back to the customer. Um, it feels to me like it's going to do okay. Um, visually, when I checked the set as well, that looked good. Um, but, you know, you never know. We'll see. Uh, what I'll do is, uh, when I do a post on this um, in the blog, I'll let you know whether or not the share actually worked out um, to my liking to go back to the customer. Uh, so anyway, uh, just another way that you can do some set repair and uh, something that uh, hopefully is a little bit of a help to you.